Shaboy Sai, stay tuned. There's a Gavaldiga podcast, Rabbi Steve Geller, does a Gavaldiga Zach, and that'll be coming out this week. Torah Giants on Chumash. Shalom of Rach, and welcome to the weekly piece on the Parsha from Torah Giants on Chumash, written by Rabbi Yitzchak Mayor Gunman, the Rabbi Meredith of the of Rockway. Sit back and Welcome to Torah Giants on Chumash, I'm Steve Geller. For many reasons, Chukas and the Paraduma, literally the laws we're not supposed to know much reasoning about, contain some of the deepest and most beautiful Torah. Go figure. There's so much magic here. We covered some in our piece last year on the secrets hiding in the problematic Pusik about the person mixing the ashes of the Paraduma into the water. I highly recommend that you watch that one if you haven't. But here we will deal with very powerful, real-world mentoring about how a Jew should conduct ourselves in very practical and profound ways. Let's take a look at our Parsha. Zos Chukas HaTorah. This is the statute of the Torah, which Hashem commanded, Speak to B'nai Israel, and they shall take to you a red, perfect cow without blemish, upon which no yoke has laid. Rashi quotes a Midrash that Satan and the nations of the earth mock the Jewish people for observing such an inexplicable commandment. What is this command, and what reason is there for it? The combination of Satan with the nations is somewhat unusual and led to an interesting interpretation. Later in this chapter, in verse 22, Rashi quotes the explanation of Ramosha Hadarshan that this law of the red heifer was an atonement for the great transgression of the golden calf. Chazal explains a Pusik in Shmos about the first set of Luchos. The tablets were of Hashem's work and the writing was Hashem's writing. Charus al Haluchos engraved upon the tablets. Chazal say that the word Charus should be read Cherus, freedom. The reason there highlighted the miracle of the letters floating through the tablets on both sides, free of the physical effects of gravity. So the wisdom of the Torah is likewise detached from the physical world. Freedom is also understood that upon receiving the commandments at Harsinai, the Jewish people were freed from the angel of death and from subservience to the nations. However, when Israel worshipped the calf, these curses returned. According to Rav Gershon Stern, logically, if the Chazal is correct, by preparing the first red heifer successfully, we should have been restored to the blessing of Harsinai. Death should have ceased, as well as the persecution of the nations. Instead, the Satan, also known as the angel of death, and the nations who persecute us with glee, come back together with death and their mockery of us. We have no response except to say that this law is inexplicable and we observe it only because it is the mystic will of Hashem. Rav Yaakov Elimelech Panet analyzes the double question of the Sutton and the nations very cleverly. What is this mitzvah and what is its reason? It's the Sutton asking the first question and the nations asking the second. Sutton's desire is simply to mock the mitzvah and to get us to ignore it as being illogical. We'll get back to the second in a moment. The Avni Nazar looks more closely into why the reason for this mitzvah was not revealed. To begin this inquiry, the first question is, what is the logic for the rule that a dead body is an Av Hatuma, the highest type of impurity? Second, why was the decree of death the appropriate punishment for Adam and Chava for eating the forbidden fruit? Many philosophers have struggled to explain how a purely spiritual soul attaches to an entirely physical body. Think about it, they're completely different entities, diametrically opposed to each other. But the student of Torah has no such problem, for we find regarding the creation of man, in the image of God he made him. And later, he breathed through his nostril a living soul. Just as God is the source for all spiritual entities and all physical matter in the universe, man who is created in his image can also contain both elements, which may remain united within him because of his unique holy image of God. No other creature in this world has free will. Since man is in the image of God, he does have free will, but before he ate from the tree of knowledge, he subordinated his free will to the will of God. When the overwhelming combination of the snake and Chava broke down his resistance for the first time, man ceased feeling this subservience and now could express his free will free of Hashem's will. Just as the snake had said, you will know good and evil. It was this image of God that had granted him the opportunity to express his free will, but by subverting that great gift with the original sin, some of the advantage of being in that image was removed from him, making him into a mortal man instead of immortal. When B'nai Yisrael said Nasev and Nishma, completely yielding their free will and unequivocally accepting the Torah even before they had heard it, they corrected Adam's sin and were restored to his level before his sin. Thus, Chazal say that at that moment, they were freed from the power of the angel of death. 
This lofty level was shattered with the worship of the golden calf. This can explain the reason for the impurity of a dead body. Again, after the sin, the complete subservience to God was broken and man turned to his logic for deciding what to do or not to do. Using this power of reason, not for getting closer to Hashem, but in actually deciding what would now be right or wrong, makes man lower than the animals. Because the animal lives only by his instincts, but those instincts never brings the animal to sin. So now when man's soul is departed and he is dead, he is the highest impurity, having fallen from the highest position of all the creatures. The mitzvah of the paraduma stands above all logic. Accepting it without understanding it once again requires us to surrender our free will when it needs to yield to the mystic will of Hashem. Free of our own rationale, logic, or choice, we follow Hashem's commandments without question. The holy commentators state that by the merit of our observing Torah laws that have no logic, Hashem rewards us with His blessings even when we don't deserve them. Therefore, the nations hope that once we are prodded, we will probe deeply and come up with a valid explanation. This would remove the special merit that achieves for us Hashem's special blessings. Thus, they are the ones to ask, what is the reason for it? In the hope that we will indeed find a good reason and lose that special merit. The one thing we do know with certainty is that you should like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit the share button that copies the link to this video, allowing you to simply paste that link into emails, texts, Facebook, WhatsApp groups, or your social media of choice. It's what Hashem wants us to do, the easiest mitzvah of Talmud Torah, and it helps realize the potential of Rabbi Goodman's life's work, Torah Giants on Chumash. We go to yeshiva to learn, that's Torah. We seek closeness to Gedolim, that's Torah. We daven for inspiration and v'sein chalkenu b'sorasecha, that's Torah. We come up with chidushim in our own learning, that's Torah. Maybe. Share your chidushim. Send your original Torah pieces to torahmaybe at gmail.com or email that address for more information. Also visit www.youtube.com slash at torahmaybe.